Now, let us conclude with the final point, point number nine, which is a sort of recap of what we have studied so far. As we have already seen, substantive law gives rise to the spontaneous and abstract order, and the spontaneous and abstract order has made possible the advancement of civilization, though the process has not been smooth. We have never had a system based purely on substantive laws. The greed, covetousness and selfishness of privileged groups have always posed a threat. Substantive law makes the spontaneous order possible. In fact, it makes possible an order which benefits all who participate in it, even when they do not know each other. Thus, substantive law permits widespread help, a quid pro quo, or a do ut des. I give, so you will give. Not only with the people close to you, but above all, with those far away, even those you will never meet. There is greater merit in this. I have some Adidas that were made in Singapore or in China, and as a result, many Chinese or Asian people who I will never meet are earning a living and prospering. Listen, giving money to a beggar covered with sores at the door of a church has merit, but the merit is very relative and slight because I can see him and I am keenly aware of his situation. Anyone but a real brute would look at him and say, well, let's give him 10 euros. Greater merit lies in a system which, by a process of peaceful cooperation, based on substantive laws and equality before the law, permits us to give even to someone we do not know and have in front of us, someone thousands of kilometers away. In a system of substantive laws, the only just equality is equality before the law and any other equality people attempt to impose is unjust by definition. Such a system has come to be known as an open society, a term which gained currency due to the works of Karl Popper, the spontaneous order, undeliberate help via the market, which benefits even people we do not know. Equality before the law, which prevails over concepts of loyalty, I no longer need to be loyal to my country, nor to the white race, nor to those of my religion. Instead, I must respect life and the property of others, and I must honor my promises. Whether the other person is Chinese, Buddhist, atheist, white, black, Jewish, etc. In a peaceful, universal order, an open society. Meanwhile, a system based on commands gives rise to what is known as a closed society, a system based on commands rests on an atavism. It rests on what we could call the emotions of the tribal society, in which we have been immersed for hundreds of thousands of years, until practically yesterday in human history. And the tribe in which we have been immersed was based on principles and parameters that differ radically from those of an open society. To begin with, it was based on a hierarchical order, hieros, sacred, archive, to rule under a tribal chief, perhaps a Native American who wore feathers to show he was the chief, or a medicine man. The atavism of the tribal period consists of a desire to transpose tribal ties to modern society. And what do I mean by tribal ties? I repeat, one, a hierarchical order. Two, help for the neighbor we know. I help people from my own tribe, people close to me, and in need but those people only, not anyone else. And the members of other tribes? Screw them! Who ever heard of helping them? And three, loyalty to the tribe. The essential principle is loyalty to those of my own tribe. Spanish patriotism and screw the French. Such is a closed society based on commands. Hayek makes a nice digression. He points out that human beings have begun to come into contact with an open society very recently. We have talked about the Industrial Revolution, which took place practically the day before yesterday, only two centuries ago. What is that in a million years of human history? Almost the entire history of mankind has been a tribal history, a history of hierarchy, a history of loyalty to the tribe, a history of struggle, of violence, a history of social justice, in other words, of injustices. And we have come to the spontaneous order only very recently. Often this makes us dizzy. It is what Marx referred to disparagingly as alienation. We are alienated because we form part of an abstract order we do not control. 
But this order is a blessing from God that permits us to cooperate peacefully in an environment of continuous economic development without needing to show loyalty to any chief nor to any tribe. Also, we cooperate with everyone else in the world, in a globalized world. But a struggle takes place. Many human beings have an inner struggle, and the fact that mankind lived for a million years in the other environment explains the very powerful emergence of those tribal atavisms, and the attempt to impose them with tragic consequences for life in society. It also explains the existence of mechanisms or procedures which, on a human level, permit people to satisfy those tribal needs. For instance, primary groups such as the family. Of course, the family is a hierarchical environment. There are a father and a mother who are in charge, and children who obey, and rightfully so. There is first-hand knowledge. The father knows that one child has certain strengths and weaknesses, and another child has others and the father performs a redistribution. Well, since this child is a little slower, I'm going to give him a little more, or a higher allowance. The father has first-hand hierarchical knowledge about his sons and daughters, who are close to him, and he helps the one with the greatest need. He shows family loyalty. The family is a primary group, and it maintains, so to speak, our age-old tribal tradition. After a long day of work in the market, in the abstract sense, we get home to find that emotional need met. There are other procedures as well. Some highly distinguished, responsible people do business in the market, and then when Saturday or Sunday rolls around, shh, Real Madrid is playing Barker! And ladies start shouting, bastard, son of a bitch! Everyone is there saying, game on, Real Madrid against Barker! Or maybe, go Spain! And terrible insults fly back and forth. And at the end of over two hours of soccer, people have let off steam. They have satisfied their atavistic tribal instincts. The tribe was Real Madrid, or Barca, or Atleti, or whatever, and people go home at peace with the world. So soccer acts as a safety valve. We could talk a lot about all of this, but the point is that such instincts still weigh heavily on human beings. Perhaps in another million years we will have genetically and culturally forgotten these tribal atavisms. Perhaps we will take refuge in only the most basic primary groups, like the family. To a large extent, this explains our frequent desire to extrapolate the tribal framework of the family to the framework of society, and say, is there a problem? Well, let us appoint the current good guy. In other words, Rajoy, Zapatero, or whomever and he will impose his ends on everyone and use coercion to solve problems. And then we are in trouble. And it makes no difference to me whether the party is right-wing, left-wing or centrist. There will be conflict, violence, injustice, etc.